Hello, I'm Richard Pyatt, and this is Legally Speaking. Attorneys from the Utah Attorney General's Child Protection Division work with the State Division of Child and Family Services to ensure the immediate protection of children. The goal is to eliminate abuse and neglect in the home. In charge of the legal work for this office is the Child Protection Division of the AG's office. And for more than 33 years, that division has been led by Carol Verdoya. Carol is leaving the office, retiring after all these years of distinguished service, and is joining us now to discuss her work and provide insight into what our office does. Carol, thanks for joining us, and congratulations on your retirement. Thank you, Rich. Can you give me an idea of uh, what our office does, how it interfaces with the, with DCFS, and how it works to protect children? Yes. Um, DCFS is tasked with investigating child abuse and neglect in response to calls that come in. And when they need legal help, whether it's advice or to file pleadings in court, uh, we assist them with that. So your uh, our portion of this office actually didn't exist when you first started. Um, how did that come about that this was a specific division within the AG's office to handle these cases specifically? What were we doing before, and then how did it evolve? So before, um, for the four years that I had been working um, here before the division uh, was formed, our office had two attorneys who were representing all of the human services agencies in the Department of Human Services. And when it, it kind of came together with a couple of different issues, uh, a class action lawsuit was filed against the Division of Child and Family Services, and the legislature also took up child welfare reform and um, you know, significantly changed the statutes and the processes. And as part of that, there were decisions made that rather than the county attorney's office representing DCFS, that the AG's office would do so and would have full-time attorneys devoted to that representation. What kinds of cases do we see here? Uh, I think that if anyone pays attention to the news, they hear pretty horrific stories of, of, of abuse and neglect. Uh, your office probably you see the gamut of, of different kinds of cases. Could you give us some kind of an idea of what, what your cases look like or what, um, you, you know, what you're dealing with every single day? Yes, and, and you know, those cases that, that end up in the news usually are the most egregious uh, because law enforcement is generally involved as well. DCFS, you know, partners with law enforcement in many cases and, they have both the criminal component and the component that DCFS is trying to make sure the child is safe, but also get services to the family. So um, we see a wide variety. Neglect is probably the most common, and neglect can encompass environmental neglect, domestic violence in the home, uh, where the children aren't directly physically impacted, uh, drug use that impacts parenting ability. And we also see physical abuse. Some of it can be severe. We see sexual abuse. And so we see all of that. Sometimes parents have disappeared and children uh, lack proper parental care or parents have a mental health issue. And that also, you know, implicates our office in needing to get orders in place. So the process starts with a call to uh, Health and Human Services to, you know, for, for help. And then a case is created, and then we get involved. Is that usually how it goes? That's correct. Uh, if the DCFS caseworkers receive a case and need legal advice, either during their investigation or at the conclusion of it, uh, that, that is when we get involved. And sometimes if a child's at immediate risk, they contact us and say, I need a warrant to remove the child, and we work with them. So this seems like the kind of job that could potentially be 24-7. Uh, DCFS is working, they may get an emergency call on Christmas Eve, and that's just the way it is. Do our Does our office get involved right away, or do we create a file right away and work with them from the beginning, or are we asked to intervene or create the legal case some time after that? We are available 24-7, not all 41 of our lawyers are available 24-7, but we have people across the state on call 
to take those emergency calls and needs if we need a warrant in the middle of the night. Um, how did you work your way up to be the uh, the director? Did you do those 24-7 calls and then to start, um, you know, doing a good job and getting promoted along the way? Or what was your career path within the office? So I started when we had those two attorneys representing all the human services agencies, which included youth corrections, disabilities, office of licensing, DCFS. So I started representing DCFS uh, back in 1990. Uh, 1994 was when our division was created, and I became the appellate attorney for the state at that time, as well as giving general counsel legal advice and assisting with the legislative process. And then eventually I became a section director and continued to handle the appeals and the general counsel um, all the way up until I became the deputy director and then the director about six years ago. So you started out um, with just a couple people in the office, and now it's grown to, what, what's the size of, uh, of our office staffing? Our office staff, total staff, is 73, uh, actually 74. Uh, we just added a couple of employees, and um, 42 lawyers, and the rest are support staff, mostly paralegals. So this started out with just two, and now you're at? It sounds like around 90. We're at around 75 total. 75 attorneys. Yeah, total. No, 41 attorneys, 75 total staff okay. in the division. Yes. Okay, thanks for clearing, <laughs> thanks okay. for clearing that up. How would you, with, in spite of the growth there, how would you evaluate the state resources to handle the job uh, that now presents itself as Utah has grown? Well, the, the growth always happens uh, at the DCFS level in terms of how many cases they have coming in. And we have had to add lawyers and staff over the years in areas that have had a population explosion like St. George, um, like the Basin. Uh, Salt Lake is always growing. And so, the unfortunately, the child abuse and neglect calls that come in increase. And so, We've we've had to add attorneys to us, help us provide that legal advice and that twenty four seven coverage. Um, the courts have also added juvenile court judges as well, and so we've had to have attorneys available to cover those hearings. It occurs to me that one of the one of the really really difficult aspects of this job could potentially be getting involved in a family dynamic where you get into he said she said situations. So you've got he said, she said situations, but then you've got physical evidence that there is abuse going on. Do, do the, does that kind of triangle sort of play off uh, itself and you have to deal with uh, the emotions of these kinds of cases as well as like the strict legal aspect of them? Well, we definitely have to deal with the emotions of these cases because it, it's very hard on families whether they've you know, just just had a dysfunctional relationship or growing up had a dysfunctional home and have had difficulty parenting and difficult circumstances in their life. It's not generally a he said, she said situation so much because DCFS always interviews the children who are verbal, um, generally has evidence from others, and sometimes the family admits that they've got some issues and need some help. So, it's it's not really like a he said she said kind of situation but it it is hard to watch families go through this and our attorneys have to learn to focus on their professional obligations even if they're witnessing and seeing the emotion that's playing out do do the laws keep up with the with, with the changing dynamic that you're that you're seeing um in other words, do you feel like you have the tools to effectively do the job in 2024? We have the tools. Um, it's always difficult when the legislature changes the law every year in a certain area, and it, there's always some change happening. Some of them are quite positive, and some make it harder uh, for some of our processes, but it's all about the balance with intervening in families and protecting children. So... You know, I don't disagree that the, the policy sometimes needs to change as long as we can navigate the protection of, of children along the way. 
Is it hard to feel like you're getting uh, personally invested in cases sometimes? Is it is it emotionally taxing on our staff? It is. What? Tell me a little bit about that. But what, what kinds of cases? Is it an individual uh, thing? Does the, does the office kind of rally around an attorney that may have a difficult case? Um, uh, uh, your, your division has a lot of uh, different people in there. I imagine that you're a fairly tight-knit group. Is that true? We are a tight-knit group, and there's always someone available to staff a case and to listen to the frustrations and the difficulties that come with uh, sometimes, you know, families um, pushing back or resisting what kinds of help they need or children who've been put in the middle where they've been abused or neglected and they don't want to hurt their parents, but they need some protection. And our attorneys are human beings, and, and they they have to, to do this work, uh, be able to focus on the professional. Uh, but but it, that comes with, you know, having a lot of great people to to talk with about their frustrations and their emotions. So the issue of child abuse is, uh, and neglect is, you know, is very, uh, kind of taps into the underbelly of our society. Uh, a lot of these cases that you see in the news are, are often horrific. Would you say that the severity of these cases, you know, what, what's changed over the years? Are we seeing uh, uh, more extreme kinds of cases or do, do these really bad cases, have they always sort of existed and uh, there's just more of them now? Or what's kind of changed since you first started? Um, they've always existed. There are just more of them. Uh, we do see a lot more in the news than we used to. And, of course, there's a lot, as you know, online available more quickly. And people who may be on, commenting on cases or situations who only have one side of the story. And that is that is difficult. Our Work is protected by confidentiality in, in the statutes as well as in our professional obligations and uh, DCFS as well. So, you know, the tip of the iceberg is what you see with the horrific cases in the media. Um, sometimes we're dealing with just as horrific a situation that does not hit the media. Uh, but the most severe cases are generally um, less in volume than the cases I talked about earlier where there is there is neglect. So those cases tend to harm the children or be more difficult for the children in any event um, because they're long-standing sometimes and chronic. So as you as you exit the office, are there some cases that you have in your mind that you kind of feel like you're still attached to as you're leaving, and you kind of feel like you're connected to or invested in it, and as you leave, you're going to still feel like you want to follow it as as it progresses? Absolutely. Yes, we have some, because I've been involved doing appeals most of the years I've been here. Now we have a primary appellate attorney, and, and I've served as backup and stayed very closely connected with what's being filed and the cases. And sometimes those high-profile cases, um, are they take a while to resolve, and there are some of those that I will be following. There are other cases that I will never forget from all the way back to the beginning. That's understandable. Well, tell me a little bit before we before we leave. Tell me a little bit about the appellate work that um, that presents itself very often. Is that uh, becoming an increasingly um, time consuming task of our office too, or people are starting to uh, you know feel like they have avenues to appeal more as we become more litigious in general? Yes, and there have been some changes in the appellate system. Um, that uh, that are kind of part of that equation in terms of increasing the issues. Generally, these cases are very fact specific, and there's a lot of case law out there and guidance for the juvenile court judges. So I don't know that we're getting more appeals, but we are getting more petitions filed with the Utah Supreme Court, uh, and they they do or don't grant cert depending on you know, the issue if it's a novel one or um, it's a difficult one. But it's it's just becoming more complex. Well, you've seen a lot over the years, Carol, and we certainly thank you for your service and thanks for sharing your thoughts uh, today on Legally Speaking. Thank you, Rich. And congratulations, and we will talk to all of you next time on Legally Speaking. <laughs>